what do you think it means, Python? Uh, that means uh, charming the Python, like there's snake charming, like when you try to be friends with the cobra. It sounded nice to me, it was very positive, like because charming is, is a very positive adjective. I think it's a great name, it's a really good name. My name is Dmitry Zemerov and I'm the original creator of PyCharm actually. So PyCharm goes back to the Python plugin for IntelliJ IDEA, which I started working on back in 2005. When you look at the growth of Python, it's an interesting and big and wonderful story that includes becoming grown up and professional. And part of grown up and professional means really big code bases, it means People who just want to get work done, like blue collar kind of programmers, and they want a developer experience that just works out of the box. It works for really big systems. It makes them faster and more productive. As Python itself grew into this intergalactic success story, there was a need for a tool that could do all of that. Python was big, but it was big in a, compar in a very different way compared to what it's like now. A lot of this was related to web, just basically building web applications. Django was a big part of that. Before that, Python was like so-called glue language that was used for some scripting. The tooling was on the, such a level that it was very hard actually to, to use it and you have to configure your environment. It was not very easy. The goal of PyCharm was to make this, to provide the out-of-the-box experience. So with the tool, you can actually start very easily. You just open the ID and then the ID helps you to write your code and you don't waste time on uh, making cumbersome uh, setups. I was never a professional Python developer but I really liked the language, I really found it nice and clean and productive and uh, enjoyable to work with. And there was work ongoing to make the flagship ID of JetBrain supporting other programming languages than Java. RubyMine was like the first standalone ID that was released. But of course, I was very much interested in doing also an ID for Python because I still love the language much more than I loved Ruby. And it was kind of a challenge to a degree because like we kind of tried to be scrappy maybe more than we needed to. So we did not try to like hire a full team right away and we tried to make do with the resources that we had. The team was very small. It was uh, Dima Jemirov and uh, uh, maybe two more folks. So I joined and I was very excited, but I quickly realized that actually nothing is working as it should. So that, like many things should be, could be improved. And that was so exciting for me that I just like from the first day, I could write some code, fix some feature, and already like next day there was a blog post where that was a, a main feature and like people were very excited and uh, it was so fun to work on such product. The big challenge of uh, making PyCharm was that uh, Python is a dynamic language so a lot of the IDE features uh, require knowing basically types of things so that you can provide completion, you can provide refactorings like th that work reliably and with Python this was to a large degree not a completely solved problem so we could not reach the same level of quality for Python that we had for Java and this was something that was a challenge. And in terms of like pieces that we need to build we actually knew that quite well because we knew what components uh, we had for Java. Like debugger was essential, framework support was essential so we had Django support very early on and of course we had to make some decisions like which technologies to support, which technologies not to support. The first release was a very excited moment. Shortly after the release, um, I remember that uh, Guido van Rossum wrote a blog post about PyCharm. It was like, oh yeah, yeah, there is a new ID and I tried it and uh, I kind of liked it. Uh, I'm not ID guy, but like, and it misses so, so much. And he listed actually the, what it misses, but still he acknowledged that it's very good that like now we have uh, um, ID for Python and like that might help like people to uh, learn the language and to be more productive and I think that was very inspiring that like Vina Van Rossum acknowledged it from, right from the beginning. As soon as we have a, had a substantial new set of features we tried to push a version out and sometimes we tried to do this uh, in connection to conferences and I remember that like trying to finish the release like literally on the plane to the conference and so that we could push it out when we land and then uh, announce it on the day of the conference. So this was a lot, a lot of hacker culture back then. It seemed so easy that like we just wrote some features, uh, did uh, a product that was useful for us and just put it on the website 
uh, so many people started to use it and it started to grow so fast and sales were growing only several years after I realized uh, what it means to have a true product market fit because later when, when I worked on other projects that you start from scratch you don't always have things going that good but with PyCharm it was success from the day one. I think it was a Python in the US, I think it was like 2012 probably. We had a booth and we, are, we were demoing PyCharm to a bunch of people and like, there was this girl who came to our booth, a teenage girl, she was like 13 or 14, and she was asking all sorts of questions, she clearly had a very good idea of what was going on and uh, what she would use the tool for, and I kind of realized that I would need to tell her at some point that she would actually have to pay for that, and she probably, I, I wasn't sure if she was able to. To me this was kind of the emotional push that I needed to commit to the decision that we need to we needed to release a free version of PyCharm. PyCharm was for a long time a good starting point, like an obvious starting point for people who was trying to get into Python. The idea can be a really good teacher. There are particular ways that you need to format the language. There are ways that you need to define variables. There are ways that you need to use things like decorators to declare classes, to declare functions. And the IDE can give you a lot of hints or like outright and tell you you're doing it wrong. So when you're a learner, that sort of stuff is really important to sort of have someone take you by the hand and gently give you hints about maybe why your code isn't working. PyCharm greatly contributed to the Python adoption. So people who were willing to use Python, whether software developers or data scientists or uh, physicists, uh, all kinds of researchers, uh, students, uh, kids from school, they, they just could use it. That's a, the, the great impact that we did with uh, PyCharm. PyCharm helps people be better Python developers. It helps them interact with the, the language more and not just use language well, but use Python well.